And the last poem I'll read, I was very happy to hear you read the poem with, uh, with some prints in there. I'm reading a poem that has a little bit of uh, light in it. And it's called uh, Poem Interrupted by White Snake. <laughs> Read it a little awkwardly because it's still new to me. <laughs> Poem interrupted by White Snake. That agreeable feeling we haven't been able to convert into words to our satisfaction, despite several conscious attempts to do so, might prove in the end to be nothing more than satisfaction itself, an advanced new formula just sitting there waiting to be marketed as such. Let my logo be the couch. I can feel it pulse as the inconstant moon to which I have come to feel attached continues to pull away from the earth at a rate of 1.6 inches every solar year. Let my logo be the couch where you merge into nights until you camp up from the shadows of the factory warehouse in historic Secaucus built on top of old swamp land. I can feel it. Let my logo be the couch where you merge into nights until you can't even remember what you wanted to begin with. Let my slogan be the scrapes of an infinite catalog's pages turning over and over until you find it again. In the air above Secaucus, a goldfinch, state bird of New Jersey, stops dead mid-flight and falls to the asphalt of a final parking lot. Where it lands is a sacred site, and earth is covered in them. Each is like the single seed from which an entire wheat field generates. This happens inside oneself, so one believes oneself to be the owner of it. From the perimeter of the field, one watches as its workers undertake their given tasks. Some cut the wheat, some bundle it, others picnic in the shade of a pear tree, itself a form of labor, too, when unfolding at the work site. A gentle pride engills this last observation like sun in September. Because this happens inside oneself, one feels one must be its owner. But call out to the workers, even kindly, and they won't call back. They won't even look up from their work. There must be someplace else where life takes place besides in front of merchandise. But at the moment, I can't think of it. In the clean white light of the market, I am where I appertain, where everything exists for me to purchase. If there's a place of not meaning what you feel, while at the same time meaning every word, or almost, I might have been taught better to avoid it. But here I go again on my own, going down the only road I've ever known. Trusting Secaucus's first people meant something specific and true when they fused the words Sihi, meaning black, and Hatchbu, meaning snake together to make a compound variously translated as place where the snake hides, place of black snakes, or more simply, salt marsh. Going moon over the gone marsh Secaucus used to be, I keep making the same mistake over and over, and so do you, slowly speeding up your orbital velocity and thereby increasing your orbital radius, just like Kepler said you would. And though I keep trying not to take it to heart, I'm not really getting where I should with it. In German, a Kepler makes caps like those the workers wear who bundle twigs for kindling under the gloom now. One looks to be making repairs to a skeletal umbrella or to thoughts a windmill entertains by means of silver fish. In the distance, ships hazard and tilt in the choppy inlet. Often when I look at an object, I feel it looking back evaluating my capacity to afford it. Maybe not wanting anything in particular means mildly wanting whatever constantly, spreading like a wheat field inside you as far as the edge of the pine forest where the real owners hunt. They keep you believing what you see and feel are actually yours or yours to choose. And maybe it's this belief that keeps you from burning it all down. In this economy, I am like the fox, my paws no good for fire starting yet. And so I scamper back to my deep den to fatten on whatever I can find. Sated, safe, disremembering what it's like up there, meaning everywhere. I tuck nose under tail, 
after I exhaust all the catalogs, cheap stuff, and the sad talk to the moon, meaning yelping, but never howling at it, which is what a wolf does. Thank <laughs> you.